Hey family, welcome to the African Ancestry Experience where we discuss how we as Black people view ourselves and Africa. Tonight's guest has a huge vision. It's to connect 100,000 HBCU students to the continent of Africa, and you can help. You don't want to miss this, so stay tuned because I want to know you. I wanna know ya, Cameroon, Guinea Bissau, Sierra Leone. Gotta let me show ya, Nigeria, Ghana, 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 Gh
send us your mailing address to info at africanancestry.com so we can get those in the mail to you. And you all, please, you've done such a great job of liking us, sharing, subscribing, but don't forget to turn on the notifications so that you won't miss a single episode of the African Ancestry Experience. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. That wasn't in my notes, but I just added that. Look, I'm so ready for our next guest. She and I have, have been connected through different people for quite a while now, and we finally get the opportunity to chop it up. So I want you all to put some globe emojis in the air tonight. Globe emojis to welcome Dr. Beverly Booker Ama. She's the co-founder and executive di director of 3GC Inc., which is a nonprofit focused on engaging students of color, including those of African ancestry, to study abroad in Africa. Let me see those emojis as she comes on the screen. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hi, Sister Gina. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's really great to be here with you. Finally, thank yes. you. Yes. Everybody else gets to, to hang out with you and have lunch with you and interview <laughs> you. And now's my turn. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, thank you. You have a lot of connections. I know. I look that those six degrees or two degrees or whatever they are these days are real. That's right. Exactly. So look, you see all these globes in the chat. That's how we do. We like to welcome our guests to the African Ancestry Experience. I'm so now, grateful for that. Dr. Beverly, we're in the midst of our celebration of phenomenal Black women this month, and you certainly are a phenomenal Black woman. Thank I can't you. wait to, to chop, chop it up and hear all about the work that you're doing to connect 100,000, 100,000 HBCU students to the continent through study abroad trips. I really... Okay, but but we got to go in order. So first, we're going to start with uh, your identity, because we're in the business of identity. And okay. so will you please finish this sentence for me? Sure. I am. I am an African from West Philadelphia, born and raised. Nice. Okay. Anything else? I am a person that has been affirmed to love Africa since I was a little kid. And mm. so I grew up always knowing that I wanted to go to Africa, um, not being sure how I would get there, um, but I always knew I wanted to go. Thankful for my West Philadelphia community, my Hampton University community, who always affirmed that Africa was important to our identity and to us building Pan-African bridges together. So wait a minute. So what was it about your West Philadelphia community that instilled that in you? Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s I'm in West Philadelphia. So I always tell my current students that, you know, I really feel privileged. You know, I was still in the era with my peers that we mostly had all black teachers um, and teachers that really focused on you know, where we were from originally mm -hmm. um, and knowing our history. And I also had that affirmed in my own family. And so I always grew, in, grew up having a big love uh, for Africa and wanted to connect. And so when I got to Hampton University, I was a history education major at Hampton. And so, you know, again, Hampton University affirmed that Pan-Africanism was paramount to our liberation. And so unlike the students that, you know, we work for today in servant leadership, I was never quite sure how I was gonna get there, but I always knew I wanted to go. Uh, so, you know, my journey getting to Africa didn't happen until my early thirties. I was just about to ask you that. So how how did you finally get there and where did you go? So it's, it's funny, I, you know, even though I always knew I wanted to go, um, I didn't get to go until I was a first time faculty member at San Diego State. Uh, we had a mentor that was the chair of African studies uh, for about 25, 30 years, Dr. Shirley Weber, who's now uh, the head of uh, the state assembly. 
uh, first black woman to be the head of the state assembly in California. A phenomenal and woman. Phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal woman. And, you know, she invited faculty in the education department to go with her on alternative spring break, San Diego to South Africa. And I, Sister Gina, jumped at the chance. When I say jump, well, I'm you've like, been waiting since you were eight years old. Of exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, I'm going. So, you know, when she invited me, you know, I went and then she, you know, had another trip to South Africa. So I went twice and she went to sub the southern region. So it just wasn't South Africa, the country, but we went to Zimbabwe. We went to Zambia. We went to uh, Botswana. Um, and then she also did a trip for community members to Egypt. And so, you know, I got to go to Egypt with them. And so it was just, you know, magical. And then when I transitioned to uh, another faculty position at California State Long Beach, she decided it was 2011 and she decided during their 10th year that they wanted to go to West Africa. Uh, because they had never taken students to Western Africa and she was going to Ghana. So I asked her, you know, can I, you know, my grad students shadow you all so we can learn how to do what you do and being a mentor, like you said, being a phenomenal black woman, she said, sure. And the rest was, you know, really history. This is nuts to me. So you were, you were in Philadelphia, you were in Virginia, much closer to the continent than being in California. It took right. me going all the way to California right. to be able to then go to Africa. It sounds like three or four times. Right, three or four times. Isn't that wow. amazing? Three or four times. Wow. And so when we went to Ghana, it just, it felt like magic. You know, mm -hmm. it felt like this is home. And the students and I decided at that time, you know, we're going to build the program around Ghana so we went the first time in 2012. And so we've been going multiple years ever since taking students. You know, initially it started as taking students and community members in the Southern California area. But as I, you know, went on to, you know, be a professor at Howard University and then Hampton University, you know, the synergy of taking students from multiple universities emerged. And so now like this, the trips in summer 2022, we have over 15 universities participating, um, mostly HBCUs. Wow. So that you just gave us the history of 3GC. So 3GC is the organization that you founded, you created the nonprofit, yes. and it stands for Give. Right. Give, Gain, Grow. And so I founded it with one of my graduate students and our other team. And it stands for, the model is Give Freely, Gain Daily, Grow Consciously. Wow. Uh, listen, y'all, I, I wish there was, we need to get an Africa emoji on Facebook and on YouTube because we need some Africa emojis right now. Shout out to Dr. Beverly for, cre for cultivating this vision um, that started in with trap with wanting to travel as a girl to mm -hmm. Africa now to this nonprofit with this now vision of connecting a hundred thousand HBCU students. So I know that your model is a pan African study abroad model. What mm -hmm. describe that for us? Tell tell the family what that means. Right, right. So you know it really centers in the idea that you know, travel for students of African descent has to be beyond just tourism. It has to be mm. about servant leadership. It has to be about us connecting together to build coalitions, right? To build for the masses together. And so one of the things that we do say with the HBCU Africa Educational Coalition is this is a legacy movement. Um, this is not necessarily new. Malcolm X, Diop, um, other ancestors have been calling for this. And so in our generations, it's a multi-generational movement with a lot of different team members. It's about us doing, you know, our part uh, to move it forward. And so, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I have so many questions. <laughs> so 
was it difficult to get the HBCUs to buy into your vision? Because what we normally think is that HBCUs are underfunded and um, don't have the resources. Right. How, what was it like to get now you have 15 on board? What was that? Right, like? right, right. You know, what? Well, it really was synergy. Um, you know, it, a lot of times, as you know, at HBCUs, you know, one of the big things is networking, networking, networking. So, you know, in the past year and a half, it was being connected to the right people that also had that vision. Mm -hmm. And so some of the leading HBCUs of this coalition are Morgan State University, Tennessee State University, um, and Clark Atlanta University and others. And so they had the like vision. And so it wasn't just me in isolation, um, elders and, and you know leaders from Ghana. And so it's we all got together and created the 100,000 Strong Africa Initiative together as a team. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's a coalition movement that's inclusive. So we actually went all 101 plus HBCUs and other partner institutions, Africa-based institutions to join in. So what is it going to take? Mm -hmm. What is it going to take to get more HBCUs to buy in? Is it just more networking? Is, is there something that we can help do as the African ancestry community to, to get more universities and colleges engaged? Right, right. Absolutely. I think number one is about spreading the message. So I think the more that we all can spread the message and talk about it, um, then people become excited about it. Because one of the things that we find on our advisory board is once we share some of the documents and have personal conversations, you know, HBCU leaders are like, oh, I am in. This is what we've been waiting for. Um, because I think we all realize that we're better together than in silos. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's about spreading the word, uh, getting people excited about it. Um, and having them understand how they can join and understand that it's inclusive, it's not exclusive. So I think that's one thing, getting the word out getting in a big out. way. Okay, okay. So you all, I want to see you drop 100K in the comments. We got to get the word out that we need 100K, 100,000 HBCU students to travel to, to Africa with 3GC. Now, where do you go? Where do right. you travel to? So this is this is a five year movement. So our goal is to get 100,000 100, students uh, moving to different parts of Africa, but also have Africa based students come to HBCUs. So that's one of the wonderful, unique things about HAIC, HBCU Africa Coalition um, Initiative, is that it's about mutual exchange you know traditionally as you know a lot of times study abroad has been one-sided where you know students from the west um, come to africa but we are trying to make sure that all students of african ancestry get to exchange uh, because we know that multiple you know leaders that get to experience hbcus like kwame Nkrumah, who went to lincoln university um he was greatly impacted by, you know, going to school at an HBCU. And so that's one of the big things. And so we want to leverage with the D9 <laughs> that we're both a part of, uh, all HBCUs, uh, governments from all over the world, that we commit to fund 100,000 students um, in an organized fashion. So we're having a conference in Ghana in May, May the 16th through the 23rd, the 100,000 Strong Africa Initiative Conference that's calling on leaders from HBCUs, leaders from African-based universities, faculty, students, the D9, alumni, to come together and talk about how to make this a sustainable pipeline for us all to travel um, and make it work for students. Because we know that we'll see a big change in terms of our Pan-African goal 
with this happening. So tell me this, how has the year of return and the all of the um, PR and awareness around the year of return, how has that impacted your efforts? I'm curious from the students' mm -hmm. interest and then also from the more administrative interest. Right, right. I think it's elevated the awareness and also the excitement. Mm -hmm. You know, so many in the diaspora, you say Ghana, and people are like, jump up. Like, that's the magic <laughs> because Ghana has done an amazing job with their year return and beyond the year return. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it really has elevated the awareness. Now, I do want to say that you asked where we want to go. So our strategy is that we will have three main regions that we will have students go to Southern Africa, uh, mainly South Africa. We will have them go to East Africa, mainly Tanzania and Kenya, and also Ghana, um, you know, initially. And then also have students from, you know, Africa go also to different countries and HBCUs. So, for example, this summer, we're taking students to Ghana and Tanzania. So, Ghanaian university students are going with us to Tanzania to kick off this idea of the mutual exchange model. Okay, okay. And so, are, is one cohort of students traveling to both countries, or are you going to have two co cohorts of students? That's a great question. So, there are three trips. So the first trip is May 9th through the 19th. So there'll be about 25 students on that trip. And then we have uh, the trip that is May 19th to June the 4th. And there's about 55 plus students on that trip already registered. And then we have about 25 plus going to Tanzania. So uh, equal, equaling the 100. Okay. And so let me ask you this. I got to represent, I did not go to an HBCU. That's um, okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I grew right. up in DC. I got my fill of HBCU. Absolutely. All Absolutely. The time. But what about students, black students at other schools? Can they get in on this? Or a Absolutely. You know, remember we started at California State Long Beach. So this is about inclusivity. And so on our trip, we have students from HBCUs. We have students from other minority uh, participating institutions. We have, you know, partner allied institutions. So it's not exclusive just to HBCUs, but we position that HBCUs and African-based universities can really lead the charge yeah. um, to, you know, make this happen. But it is inclusive because we're, we're not looking to leave anybody out. So how does that work? Um, if if there's someone who's watching now who has a college student and they've been they like you, they've been wanting to go to Africa or maybe they just found out where they were from and they're like, OK, I got to go. Right. How can they if they're not one of the institutions that, you know, um, Morgan or Tennessee right. State or Clark Atlanta? How can they, can they just go to, to your website and absolutely they can email us at contact at we are three gc.org. Uh, we do have slots still available for the Tanzania trip and uh, we can fit in a few more and the May 9th trip, the May 19th trip is like <laughs> over capacity busting at the seams. Right, it's like busting at the seams, but, um, but, you know, we still have some slots. And so it's that the, you know, three main universities that I mentioned, Tennessee State, uh, Morgan State, and Clark Atlanta, they really are, you know, as HBCUs, the architect HBCUs that really have been at the charge um, of everything. Their presidents have been amazing. Mm. Dr. French, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Glover, who's your sorority sister. She's also the chair of the HBCU White House Initiative. Um, so they really have been leading the charge with their fabulous study abroad directors um, and team. So it's not that it's just can be those HBCUs, but it's that they've been leading, but we want to include all HBCUs. So we have others that are represented. 
We have my alma mater. There are a lot of students from Hampton University on the trip, Howard University. And so some schools have committed to pay for their students. And so we do want to call and encourage um, our other universities that have students to commit to paying for your students as we also work to build this sustainable you know, funding for students to go over five years in 100,000. So speaking of sustainable funding, the, the African ancestry community is uh, a very supportive community. And so mm -hmm. I want to put a call out to everybody who's watching that if you could just go on over to weare3gc.org slash donate right now. And anything, anything you can donate can help, can help. A, a, a kid, a young Beverly, who so that <laughs> they don't have to wait until they're in their 30s. Absolutely. <laughs> but they can actually go in this culturally relevant, culturally immersive, um, servant-based mm -hmm. uh, travel experience with other Black students. That, right. that is the biggest gift that we could give a student today, besides Absolutely. them knowing who they are and where they're from, but enabling them to travel there. I, so please go over to weare3gc.org. I'm just saying, like, $10. You can give $10, $20, whatever you were gonna didn't spend on lunch today. Or you right. know, instead of going out this weekend and going out to dinner, maybe you could donate that to this effort to right. get more of our our young people Absolutely. over to the continent in an educational in an educational context. So not sending them over there to turn up you know, mm -hmm. for Christmas or, <laughs> or New Year's, mm -hmm. but actually have this um, very enriching experience in the spirit of our leaders who have done this um, before. Absolutely, because they are going to do service learning projects. For example, last summer, students taught kids in schools in Ghana coding. Um, they did career workshops with Ghana. I'm a school counselor by training after being a history teacher. And so Ghana wants very much for connections to help students with career exposure. Uh, what are the trending jobs in Ghana, but also entrepreneurship, um, nutrition. We have a partnership with Howard University, um, especially the occupational therapy program. So part of the group that's going May 19th, they're doing a maternal health program where interprofessional students from undergrad on to medical school students uh, from Howard and some other partner institutions, they will be going to maternity hospitals in Ghana and they'll be doing clinical rounds and case studies. So they can share what works to address maternal health for black women in the States. And then also the Ghanaian professionals can share what works in Ghana, because as we know, the black maternal health rate is alarming in both places. Mm -hmm. And so students are going for a purpose, right? And so, you know, this is really an investment in us because they are the emerging Pan-Africanists. They are the leaders. And we talk to the students all the time in our 3GC class how will you be a Pan-Africanist as an engineer? How will you be a Pan-Africanist as a fashion designer? How will you be a Pan-Africanist as, you know, an entrepreneur, as a teacher? So it's about Black liberation globally uh, for the masses. So it's important for them to be able to connect with this experience. I love what you said, that it's, it's about doing this for African people in, in mass. Mm -hmm. Nothing that we do should be just for us. Right. Everything Absolutely. that we do as African people should be for the collective. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate the work that you're doing to promote that collective benefit. Um, what's, can you give us one memorable experience? Look, out of all the memorable experiences that you've had. <laughs> right, right. One people to Africa. Right. One memorable experience you could share. 
So, I, you know, it's funny that you asked that because just recently uh, some video came up on uh, Facebook memories. You know how Facebook does memories. And so they did memories of, you know, us being there for Independence Day uh, for Ghana, which is March the 6th from 1957. Ghana just celebrated its 65th uh, Independence Day. And so I think that was one of the memorable experiences celebrating independence of a black nation um, around all black people and black leaders. Uh, so that was really memorable for us and students. Did they, how did that resonate with them, with the students? Like, could they even understand? They, they were in awe. They were in awe. Some of the things they say was, everything is black. In, in a in a strength based way, um, it's so exciting for them. So you know, it's it's amazing for them to see you know the president being black, the vice president, the, you know other leaders, uh, you know a lot of the media, you know looking like themselves, um, and so it's just a different feeling, and so it's liberating for them. Yeah. You know a lot. Um, you know the three cores of Pan Africanism. Uh, when we talk about the model we use uh, from Dr. Rose Walls and Elder Albie Walls and myself, we actually did a study on our Pan-African study abroad model. And shout out to Clark Atlanta, where our manuscript is about to be published um, on the model um, through their new journal. And so, you know, part of the main um, component is identity development. So identity development, humanism, um, helping students to understand how to look at humanity across the globe, and then also looking at economics, how to liberate ourselves uh, from capitalism. And, you know, we talk with students about how, as, you know, Generation Z and millennials, do they create a new economic model that works for them and, and the masses? I love this, Beverly. I hope you guys have gone over to weare3gc.org slash donate. Just, I'm just, I feel like I want to do a telethon. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. The students are so excited. You know, they're so ready. <laughs> so. Oh, my goodness. Anything that you can donate to help the, the students get to Ghana and Tanzania. And this year, actually, they're going in May and there's right. slots yeah, open. Yeah. If you have students who might want to go. Um, if you have a partner institution, if you're part of an, another institution that you think could benefit from being connected to this initiative, please go to weare3dc.org and uh, connect with Dr. Beverly. So, Beverly, we have to talk about legacy. Okay. You've been such a blessing to countless students who want to expand their view of Africa. So what legacy would you like to leave? Mm -hmm. I think I would like to leave the legacy that we have to uh, be loyal to Africa. You know, Malcolm X talked about that no African on this planet will be free until Africa is free. Um, and we have another, you know, um, leader contemporary leader that you know is a part of 3gc he's a professor um at university of cape coast professor botchway and so we had a pan-african student summit back in 2019 during the year of return and so one of the things that he challenged the audience when he spoke to them is where does your loyalty lie and so you know what i would like to leave as a legacy for students is that you have options and part of your freedom is being connected to the continent and so you may live anywhere and so we have to realize that our ancestors sacrificed there as you as you know right uh, with the amazing work that you do dr page you are a phenomenal woman wow. and so the amazing work that you do you know too that there are ancestors that are at the bottom of the ocean, right? There are ancestors that chose to endure and go to the plantations because they knew that the unborn needed to, you know, be born and, you know, push us further. 
Um, there are those that on the continent may revolt. And so, you know, one of the legacies that I would like to contribute is that they understand that they have both options now because of ancestors and elders before them. And they also have a responsibility to move this Pan-African vision forward mm -hmm. um, to the next level. Woo, that is a legacy. I love it. I love it. Everybody, what's a legacy emoji? Put legacy, put legacy. I just, I can't do it. I need y'all to put legacy in the uh, in the comments. I, this is just so powerful. It's powerful work. I got to go to Africa when I was a junior in college. And I didn't go as a study abroad program, but I did go as a part of a sister cities program. Okay. DC and Dakar and yeah. ended up having a much more culturally immersive experience than they probably expected me to. Right. So I know firsthand the value of being able to travel to Africa and be exposed to that, a variety of African cultures uh, as a young person. And so I'm personally excited about the work that you're doing. Thank you. Uh, and I hope it works out that we are with you in, well, I know African ancestry will definitely be with you. Yes. And I hope it works out so that I'm with you too. Yes, I hope so too. Uh, because I just, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything I do that is more satisfying than helping people, giving people the gift of ancestry on the continent and to be right. able to do that for young people i have not done yet and so uh, i'm very much looking forward to that opportunity we are 3gc.org you can go to just go to the dot org or you can do me a solid and go to the dot org slash donate whatever <laughs> whatever your choice is uh please check them out and see how you can contribute to the work that um, Dr. Beverly and all of her colleagues are doing uh, to, to enrich the lives of our children and enrich mm -hmm. Africa. Beverly, we play a game every week called Factor Whack. Okay. To see how much our family knows about a topic. Okay. So we have some statements that, will you play with us? Absolutely, I would love to. So we have we have some statements. I'll have you read the statements and then everybody who's watching, we want you to put in the comments whether the statement Dr. Beverly has read is fact or if it's whack. OK, so are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. OK, the first Western style university level institution in sub-Saharan Africa was built in Nigeria. Hmm. Is that Can I read fact? it again? Yeah, read it. Yeah, you're the professor. Yes, professor, please. <laughs> please. The, the, the first Western style university level institution in sub Saharan Africa was built in Nigeria. Fact or whack? Ooh, we got a lot of wax. The wax are coming through pretty strong, Dr. Beverly. Woohoo! They came out the gate with the wax. <laughs> we got a couple of facts. Shout out to KD on YouTube. She's like, that's a fact. But Mary's coming through with the wax. Congratulations on your move, your relocation, Mary. Okay, so is this fact or is it wax? I don't know. All right. The answer is it's whack. <laughs> so founded on February the 18th, 1827, Fora Bay College is a public university in Mount Oriol in Freetown, Sierra Leone. It is a constituent college of the University of Sierra Leone. And we, we visited that that the remains, I guess, what, what remains of that university. And it's absolutely incredible to wow. see, you know, and I guess it's not ancient, but such an such an old um such an old institution. And they're they are now planning to uh, restore it okay. to its original grandeur. That's amazing. Yeah. Hmm. That's the first African ancestry family reunion. Okay. Here's our next. Okay. 
that for right. Ashmoon Institute, established in 1854, is the nation's oldest HBCU. Ashmoon Institute, established in 1854, is the nation's oldest HBCU. Hmm. Is that a fact? Or is that whack? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know. Okay, we got some more wax coming through. Do you know the answer to this one, Dr. Beverly? I think it's whack. You think it's whack? I'm going to keep my mouth closed because I don't want to be embarrassed. We got it. Looks Wait, I might be embarrassed, but I think that I think the oldest was a different one, but we'll see. <laughs> looks like okay, looks like the tide has turned in your favor. People are people are taking your lead. I'm seeing many more wax now. Shout out to Sequoia Allen. Okay, let's see. Is it fact or is it whack? Ah, really? Fact. Oh, see, I learned something new. It was named after Jehudi. Ashmoon, one of the early American settlers to establish Liberia, it was renamed to Lincoln University in 1866. That was a trick question. <laughs> that was a trick question because I knew it was Lincoln, but I didn't know they had a different name. That was a very great question. <laughs> Shout out to Wendy for the factor whack. Right. Hey, shout out, Wendy. Wendy gets an A plus from Professor from Professor Beverly. Okay, I think we have one more. <laughs> okay, so the next one, 75% of black people with doctorate degrees earn their undergrad degrees from an HBCU. So 75% of black people with doctorate degrees earn their undergrad degree from an HBCU. Wow. That's a great factor, whack. That's a great factor, whack. This time I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling like that has to be a fact. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna vote fact. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I see Katio. Shout out to Katio Basal, Cheryl. Vicky's thinking that it's more fact. Sparkle. I love your name, Sparkle Rosemary. Yeah. Everybody's saying fact. I, I don't see any wax in here. Linda's saying fact. Okay. You're going to say fact, Dr. Beverly? You gonna I'm going to say fact. Oh, they Mahawa, we got one whack in there. Shout out to Mahawa. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is it? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Fact. Okay. Yeah. That's fact. That just makes hey, actually, most of Most of the professionals um that are black have earned undergrad degrees from hbc yeah that that makes perfect sense mm -hmm. to me um well this was fun that was really fun. really fun thank you for, for playing with us dr oh Matthew. you're welcome and i want to encourage everybody if you think these facts were interesting we have a whole bunch of blog posts over at africanancestry.com our current one is at africanancestry.com slash black women uh, you can also take the Find Your Tribe quiz to see which ethnic group you have the most in common with. You can catch past episodes of the African Ancestry Experience on YouTube. So if you need to go back and remember the website, remember what you what you can do to support weare3dc.org. Uh, you can catch it in the <laughs> you can catch it in on uh, YouTube. And if you guys are watching us on the replay, put the world emoji, the globe emoji, in the comments to show Dr. Beverly Booker Ama some love. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. so very much for being with us here. Thank you. you. You're we, welcome. Thank you. Uh, there's nothing like sharing the evening with a phenomenal black woman. Likewise. <laughs> likewise. <laughs> likewise. It was it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, you know, 3GC um and Hayek are, you know, just elated that African ancestry is a partner. Uh, to both. And we're just really excited of what we all can build together. Absolutely. And shout out to our super producer, Wendy Cherry, who I think was probably the initiator way back when of yes. the connection, not even knowing what it would result in. So shout Absolutely. out to Wendy for that. Absolutely.
Everybody, we'll be back on Wednesday for the African Ancestry Experience with author Anita Kopax, who will be revealing her African Ancestry test results. Now, if you remember, we talked to her, it was in November. I was in Sierra Leone. We were doing the show and we talked to her and my, my the power went out and all sorts of things. So she took the test and we're going to be back next Wednesday for her reveal. You don't want to miss it. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. And until we meet again, Beverly, you and the whole African Ancestry fam, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be whole. Ashe, Ashe. I wanna know ya, Cameroon, Guinea Bissau, Sierra Leone, gotta let me show ya, Nigeria, Bioko Island, Liberia. I wanna know ya, Cameroon.